Right guys, I've set up, I've had a little bit of a quick bait up. I've put in one cast, and I've had a little roach. Um, I think the bream are down there. I'm on a lake here that's full of bream and carp. Um, I've brought the margin pole, the uh, MAP TKS 8.5 margin, uh, just because there's some big lumpy carp in here, big carp. So I'm using a bit heavier elastic than I'd like to. I'm using a 15s hybrid. Um, the bream in here, average three pound, two pound sort of thing, you get a lot of them. So I'm hoping to get a couple of those. All I'm using is ground bait and pellet. I've got nothing else with me at all really. Well, I've got some paste if I want to go to paste. I'm fishing out in front of me at top two plus two first, and I've set up another one at top two plus six. Oh, yeah, top two plus four to make it six section, sorry. And then I've baited a margin section down the right hand side here keeping an eye on it just in case anything moves in there for the carp. Um, I'm using a Preston, um, where's my top kit, I'll show you. There we are. Using uh, a Preston F1 fine float and I've got it shot with four number um, nines and then a number ten on the hook length just to keep it on the bottom. All shotted with stots, so that I can move them around quite easily if I need to. I've got one actually on the hook length. I've just got a bit of slime on the line here, probably from that roach. Just pulling it off. Um, yeah, one shot, three inches up from the hook because I'm fishing about three inches over depth when I'm on top two plus two, and then about an inch over depth when I'm further out, using the same kit because I'm not faffing about with loads of top kits and everything. I've got another top kit set up for the margin if I want to, and that's got a Preston um, carp pellet float on there, shotted with number eights. And on the end of the hook here, this is a size 16's Guru um, extra strong hook, if you will, PTFE coated. And we'll get a put in and see what we can get in the first few minutes. So let's see how we go. Get in the box. I've got my trousers rolled up, I'm afraid, because it's quite warm, warmer than I thought it was. I'm starting off on um, Dynamite Baits F1 Swim Stim pellet. They're quite a hard pellet, but you get them on the hook fairly well. That's on there. I've got a long lash, just so that if I see any of the carp cruising around, I can mug them. But there you go, just top two plus two. Straight in over there. I'm just going to throw, because they respond very well to sound here. So I'm just throwing in a few pellet around them. And I'll put another ball of ground bait in in a bit, because I've not put a lot of ground bait in, but this place is full of bream. Absolutely full of bream. Now, you can't see from there, obviously, um, but there's a lot of small fish on the surface. That's why I don't use maggot here. Use maggot, use corn, you will get hammered by a little rudd and roach as soon as it hits the water. So you just try and put baits on that get down quicker and are a bit big for them to get the gobs around. But let's see how this goes anyway. We've put in, it's on the bottom now because it settles very slowly this float. And we're just getting mullered at the moment by those little things tacking the float, knocking it side to side constantly. I'd like to have fished, like if I was fishing for these bream here myself I would have gone down to a 10-11 elastic and had a bit of fun with them, but I don't like doing it when they know the carp that are down there. There's, like I say, some lumpy carp in here, up to 20 plus pound. And there's a lot of snags around the side. You can see it's very rushy either side of me. There's lily pads as well. So I would like to have a little bit of control if I do hit one of those carp. Um, main line is, um, I think it's Guru. Yeah, Guru main line, the engage. Oops, that's a touch, that was a tuckle then. And um, that is seven pound main line with a hook length of five pound. Again, it's geared up for those carp. And um, when I fish here in the winter, sometimes I can normally just about stay away. Oh, I missed that one. The pellet's still on as well. Just about stay away from the carp, so I tend to fish it a bit lighter. And I use like a 12 elastic. And yeah, I've hit the carp on here and I've had them up to oh, some fish swirling down in the other margin here. Um, I've had the carp up to about 14, 15 pound in here on on that. 
and that's normally in the winter you can get away with using corn and what have you because the smaller fish tend to die off you know when I say they die off they just don't tend to show but in here in recent times the um, the roach and the tench have started to show and there's not many of them in here but they're starting to show which is good because I've not never caught a tench out of here and when I say the roach I'm not on about these tiddly things I'm on about bigger roach you know pound pluses the carp just rolled on the surface there to my left nice fish as well you know and if I see one nearby I might just try and give it a mug I've got some all a range of different pellets here I've got hard pellet if I want to go on hard pellet I've got um, Fuka Neons, I've got normal Fuka hook and feed bags, I've got Dynamites, I've got um, Sonus Baits, oops, should have been looking at my float then. Um, all just a range of different ones. Sonus Baits Expanders are great, they are really good, especially if you want to stay off those smaller fish. You know, because they do swell up that little bit more once they hit the water. And they turn into a nice big sort of like 6 mil pellet. They're about the size of a four when you put them on. You're just watching me float there because it's it's giving a bit of a swell. But it's being it's getting so much attention from small fish, as in knocking the line, knocking the float like this. It's a pain in the ass to try and present your bait still, you know. But we're just gonna give it a goo for a minute or two. Oops, that was a tickle. Could have been a line bite, don't know. And where I'm fishing, out there, it's about five foot deep to six foot, depending whether I'm at the four sections or the six sections. You know, and even in the margins, down the margin here, the near margin, that's nearly five foot deep. It's four and a half foot right in on this left margin. Right hand margin near the lily pads and everything, that's about three and a half foot to four foot. It's a little bit shallower. Pardon me, I do apologise. Yeah, it's just getting too much attention from that small stuff at the moment, like knocking the float around. I can't get a, a static bait. I've got quite a long lash, again, and it's so I can just flip beyond if I want to and let it settle a bit further out. And because the because of the size of the bream in here and the amount of them, you hook a, you know, half a dozen of them or something like that, and they tend to just back out for a bit. So if I'm fishing on my ground bait and everything. I want it to be able to just go a little bit beyond because they won't back out far they don't go all the way across the lake or anything they literally just back out by a meter or so but you'll notice it it will go absolutely dead and you'll be thinking what the heck that's not liking that oh, flick it out of there. there we go back out again let it settle slowly when I hit the last fish the roach like there was a carp in my swim that must have been about a foot or so under the surface I couldn't see him but Jesus did he take off when I hit that, that little roach because I thought wow what have I hit that's not given a fight and then realized it wasn't the carp I'd, I'd hooked into it was a little roach oops that was a tickle there on the settle just as it's settling down that's the other oh, there we go that feels like one of the bream. Not one of the bigger ones, but still, it shows that they're down there. Lovely bream fish in here, it really is. That's probably one of the smaller bream, that. Oh, there we go. Nice size skimmer. Give him a pound and a half. Yeah, pound and a half, getting on for two nearly. Let's put him straight back. So it shows they are down there. And they are willing to feed on what you put in, you know. Just a few little pellets out there like that. I'll go on a, I'm going to go on a Fuka Orange Neon this time. Just to see if it's a faster bait with it, something they can see quicker. Because the other ones are a very dark brown. The water here is very coloured. Very, very coloured. Right, let's go for high visual. Back out of there. I'm not using a kinder pot. Like I say, I like to throw my bait in when I'm here. Because they respond to the sound and the, and the splash. But 
that wasn't a bad bream that for the first one. Just give myself a few pounds for that on my clicker because I'm just trying to see what I can catch in a few hours here on my clicker. Right, so I've brought minimal gear with me. I've got the main long pole if I wanted to, but I'm not. I'm fishing with this margin pole to see how it fares. And it's, it's strong enough, but I'd like to see what it does if I hit one of those carp. See, they are lumps when you hit them in here. That's why I have got heavy elastic, even my margin rig here. That's on a 17's elastic. Oh, that was a tickle. Oops. Bit of a breeze kick in there at the minute. I think what I'll do is I'll have this put in, see if I get a fish or not, and then I'm going to put in another ball or two of ground bait. Try and keep them around if I can. They respond fairly quickly. I'm just going to put some bait down there in that margin. A little bit over there as well in that one. always keeping your eyes open here because literally it's so much fun when you hit those carp so much fun I think the smallest carp I've had out of here in all this times I've been fishing is probably about eight or nine pound that's probably the smallest so it gives you an idea of what they are in here you know oh I missed that one oh, struck too soon oh it's too late really it's too soon <coughs> Cough, cough. And in fairness, when the carp are cruising around um, on here, you tend to get a lot of them on the drop. So I always fish fairly light floats that drop down slowly. Like I say, three number nines, four number nines. Unless it's my margin rig, then like I say, it's a, it's a heavy edge rig normally, or a heavier edge rig. Hello, birdie. Lots of waterfowl here as well, coots and moorhens and get the odd grass snake as well going around on, onto the islands and that's lovely to sit here at times. Here yeah, the tractors going up the road, don't know if you can but they're always around. It's what happens when you live in the country so you don't afraid? Not for them. But it really is a beautiful lake you know and it's it's fishing here and I on in pristine condition. When you catch the carp they are immaculate. Having to wait a little bit for the bites here, you know, that, that maybe the f neon orange, they're not liking it, might be the smell, might be the taste, might be the, the sight of it. But certainly a slower response time than the last bite, but that was a tickle then. Some of the times though, those tickles, you don't know if they're a full on bite or if it's something just under the surface hitting the line because there's such an abundance of small fish in it there we go that was on the fuka and that's another bream that, that elastic love how these hybrid elastics work they really do work well don't need to use the puller on bream because they just come in nicely they do when you hook them that down. Look at this, eh? Lovely bream these, lovely light size skimmers. Well I'd call them bream really, these are two pounders plus, you know. And you'd soon build up a heavy net catching these all day if you were in a match, you know. I've got slime all up my line. Always make sure you get the slime off your line lads. Don't fish with slime on your line because it's easily visible to fish. And I'm pretty sure they sense it, you know, it is panic slime at the end of the day. And I think fish know when it's there, you know, they really do. So that was on the neons. Let's try something different again. We're going to a red krill, six mil red this time. It's a bit big for the hook I've got on, but never mind. We can, we can slide it on there. No problem. Just put that down there a minute. Uh, lean over, get some ground bait. I'm fairly accurate with my 
throws here because it's not far out. Like I say, you're only fishing in top two plus two, so you don't have to be dead on. And when it's a massive bream, they come and they kick it all up anyway. Let's put that one down the margin there. So that's two nice bream on the strop there. Whoops. My line had looped over then. That's fine now. Tell you what, this margin pole is so light and easy to use. I know I'm only using top two sections, but or top four, but it is so light and easy, and it really plays these skimmers well. I can't wait to see if I hit one of these carp. What it does, I really can't. But I say, if I hit one of these carp, I've fished here before and I've had 70 odd pound of bream out, and not even tickled the carp, not even seen them. I mean, they're cruising round. I've seen them over near the island. I've seen them rolling over either side of my peg, but. Sometimes they just don't want to feed, you know what they're like. Lumpy carp. Fussy buggers at times. There was one just then smashing about on the surface. Hello. Good piece of grass in the island. See what that is? A tickle then. And again. You're always getting these knocks, like I say, in. With it being the small fish, you've just got to wait for that float to disappear. Being as light as it is, that float, once these bream take it or anything, it, it's gone. It's not, you don't get little dappy bites really. You get a proper good gazunder bite, as they call them. But it's simple fishing. I've only come down for a few hours because I've got work later on. And it's a case of just bringing. A little bit of gear. Yes, it looks like I've got everything, but believe me, it's a lot of it's empty in these bags and left some of it in the car and what have you. All I've got is the pole, the box, a landing net and my bait, you know, and a few peripherals for my tray and what have you, just to make fishing comfortable. So it's easy little grab a, grab a bit of bait, grab a rod or a pole or whatever and get on it this place. Something moving right in near my feet down here in the margin. I'm just having a look to see if I can see what it is. Don't know. He's in the doppled light, so I can't see him. And you see again, I've gone onto the swim. Red. Not a, not a tickle on it at the moment. I am mixing and changing baits all the time, so I'm not getting a rhythm going yet. I mean, I'll think of, I'll see something in a minute, one of the baits, and I'll go, yep, that's it, and I'll just stick on that if it's working. But I'm just trying different things at the moment to see what response times are, you know, and how they react to them, because they're all different sort of sizes, densities, how they sit, how they fall. seemed to lift a bit then I thought maybe my pellet had come off but oh, what was that Roger there we go give it a long flick and let it drop right down slowly see, as soon as I flick in like that I've got about 40 million tiddly things like this attacking the float That's settled now. It's got to where it should be. That's how long it takes for these floats to settle when I've got them dotted the way I have. Because I want that nice slow fall. As soon as it's got down there, that was interest straight away. Maybe I should have struck, I don't know. 
and I'll know if I come in and I've got near bait on. Just move that over slightly. You know, I've put in those balls of ground bait and it's gone a little bit quieter. So maybe that's just, they've just moved themselves out ever, ever so slightly with the noise. But they'll be back, that I'm pretty sure of. Back in there, right around the float. Nice little heavy group. There's a carp on the surface there now. If he came a bit closer, I would have been tempted to have a flick at him. Good sized fish as well, good double. You never know, he might come into that margin area that I'm thinking, oh, there he is again, swirling. Yeah, he's going in around that tree to my right. Yeah, if he comes in there and gets his head down, I'll know because the dirt they kick up when they put their heads down is it's immense. Well, by the look of it, they either don't like the krill. Is that the one it was? Yeah, the red krill. Oh, little, little baby coots there. Can't be more than a, a few weeks after getting on the water surface. They're right black fluffy little dots they are. <laughs> Bright red beaks, not this big. Lovely to see. Just two of them. What a nice thing to see. Well, that's the, the, the pleasures of fishing on a lake. It's watching nature as well. Nobody can argue with that. Some of the sights you see. Yes, we all like to catch fish and have a good day's fishing, but sometimes you've just got to sit back and take in, take in your world around you. You know, you've got a lovely day. Even if it's raining, it can be a lovely day, but, you know, lovely weather, blue skies, warm sunshine, nothing bothering you. You can just let yourself relax, you know, let your mind go to ease for a bit. Take the stresses off. Whoops. Very, very, very fast bite then. You know what? Not happy with that. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to change over a pellet. And I'm going to go back out to my far line a minute. Because they're obviously not taking that or they've knocked down there. So forget that. Take that pellet off. Put it down my margin, and we'll go back to that one there. further out this time, Eek. to my far line. I might say fishing this at six sections. And it's so light and comfortable. So now out just on the far ground bait area, just beyond my marker. Oh. I'll have to wait.
Mm, Bream just rolled further out. Hold on fire. There we go. That's what it was. Well, I say that's what it was. It's either the bait or the thing. This feels a bit more of a proper bream. Yeah. That's where I'm going to stop the video for now. Fizz on him. Nice bronze one again. Getting on for the three pound mark that. You know, two pound plus. Easy. Just about get my head, hands around him. So two pound plus her. Not bad, eh? Back he goes again. I'll leave the rig there. Get up off my box. There you go, lads. See you soon. Tight lines.